Hi everyone, I'm Teacher Cheryl and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be looking at how to summarize accurately. Now, many lessons on summary usually tell us what to include in our summary paragraph. And they usually miss out things that we should not be including. So that's why in today's video, we are going to focus on things that you should be excluding, things that you should not include in your summary paragraph. So let's jump right into it. This is an example taken from the 2020 O-Level Summary question. I'm not going to read the whole question to you, but I'd like to point your attention to the words that I've highlighted in red. It says that your summary must not be longer than 80 words. So it's really not very easy to cut down the passage into just 80 words. And that's why it's so important to only put in the relevant points in our summary paragraph and exclude the ones that are unnecessary. So let's take a look at how you are graded for summary first. You are graded for your content points and this consists of 8 marks. So 8 marks means you need at least 8 content points in your paragraph. The second thing you are graded for is language and this consists of 7 marks. Now for today's lesson, I'm going to focus more on content points because I want to talk about what you should not be including in your summary paragraph. So let's do a little bit of math here. So as I mentioned, you would need at least 8 content points in your summary paragraph. And remember, the word limit is 80 words. Therefore, for one content point, you should be writing about only 10 words. That should hopefully give you a good estimate of how much you should be writing for each content point. Okay, so let's get into our strategy of how to summarize accurately. And that means to exclude things that we do not need in our summary paragraph. So for the first step, we need to identify the main idea of the content point first. Secondly, we need to include only relevant information. So what are the things that we can actually leave out? The first one seems pretty obvious, right? It's like we need to leave out irrelevant points. The second thing that we should leave out is repetitions. We should also leave out any details or elaborations. It is also not necessary to include examples unless the question prompt asks you for it. The next one is to leave out any quotations. And finally, to leave out redundant words. So let's take a closer look at these six items. So the first one is irrelevant points. Now, we should leave out irrelevant points because they do not address the question prompt. We only want to take information that addresses the question prompt. Let's take a look at an example. So in this question, it says, using your own words as far as possible, summarize the benefits of sport and the problems connected with it. This is from the passage, exercise releases substances which promote the growth of new tissue and reduce the risk of developing various inflammatory diseases. So remember in step one, we have to decide what the main idea of this sentence is. So the main idea of this sentence is that exercise promotes tissue growth and it also reduces the risk of diseases. So looking back at the text, which part of the sentence do you think we can actually leave out? So we can actually leave out these words, releases, substances, which. Because what we need to focus on is the benefits of exercise. And as we mentioned before, the main idea of this point is that exercise promotes tissue growth and reduces the risk of diseases. So releasing substances is kind of like an irrelevant point. So let's go on to the second one, which is repetitions. So repetitions are points that have been repeated. So obviously, if they are repeated, we do not need to include them in our summary. Going back to the exact same question where they're asking us about the benefits of sport and the problems connected with it. So this is another point. I'll read that for you first. The concentration and coordination required in many sports, whether individual or team events, can be stress busters, producing players healthy in mind as well as body. So can you spot what the main idea in this sentence is? The key word in this sentence is stress busters. Therefore, the main idea of this sentence is that exercise relieves stress. So the repetition in this sentence is this part here, producing players healthy in mind as well as body. So it's not really necessary to include this part because we have identified that the main idea is that exercise relieves stress. And stress relief is kind of equivalent to being healthy in mind. 
Now, the third thing you can leave out from your summary paragraph is details. What I mean by details are elaborations of the main content point, because a lot of times the text will actually elaborate or give further information about whatever the main point is. So we're sticking with the same question where we have to summarize the benefits of sport and the problems connected with it. This is another content point that I have picked out. True sportsmanship teaches courtesy, integrity, and a willingness to accept defeat. All attributes which build individuals who are well-rounded beyond the sports field as well as on it. So I'd like you to pick out the main idea of this content point first. I hope you've picked this out. Courtesy, integrity, and a willingness to accept defeat. This is definitely a benefit of sport. So the main idea for this content point is that sport teaches certain values. So for this sentence, I can actually leave out the last part, which is from all attributes which, until, as well as on it. Because notice it's just talking about the attributes which has already been mentioned in the first part of the sentence, which is courtesy, integrity, and a willingness to accept defeat. Let's go on to the fourth one, which is examples. So it's not necessary to include examples because usually examples are included in a paragraph or a text in order to support the content points. Now do take note, like I mentioned before, if the question specifically asks you to include examples in your summary, you must include it. If it does not mention, then it's okay to leave out examples. So let's look at the same question, the benefit of sport and the problems connected with it. I have picked out another content point. Working as part of a team, for example, in basketball, teaches cooperation and a willingness to play to each other's strength for the good of all. So can you pick out the main idea of this content point? I'd like you to pause the video and share with me your main idea in the comment box below. Okay, so let's take a look. The main idea comes from these keywords cooperation, and a willingness to play to each other's strengths. So the main idea here is that the benefit of sport also teaches certain values. Of course, in this sentence, they list other types of values. However, they're still talking about values. And notice that, for example, in basketball can actually be left out because it's just an example that supports the content point. It doesn't actually add to my summary. The next one we can leave out is quotations. So quotations are words or phrases that someone said or wrote. So usually quotations can be left out because they are similar to examples where they are used mainly to support the main point. So let's take a look at the next content point. Working as part of a team, for example in basketball, teaches cooperation and a willingness to play to each other's strength for the good of all. Thus, True sportsmanship teaches courtesy, integrity, and a willingness to accept defeat. All attributes which build individuals who are well-rounded beyond the sports field as well as on it. The founder of the modern Olympics, Pierre de Coubertin, I think that's how you pronounce it, said that the most important thing in sport is taking part in it. Can you identify the quote in this particular paragraph? So remember, in the previous points that we talked about, the very first sentence in this paragraph was a content point. And the main idea was that it teaches cooperation and a willingness to play to each other's strength. The second sentence is also a benefit of sport, as it states that sport teaches us courtesy, integrity, and a willingness to accept defeat. Now notice the last line of this paragraph. The founder of the modern Olympics said that the most important thing in sport is taking part in it. Now this itself is a quote because it's exactly what the founder of Modern Olympics said. And notice how this is just an add-on to the previous content points. Therefore, I do not need to include this quotation in my summary. So let's take a look at the final thing that we do not need to include in our summary paragraph and those are redundant words. Redundant words are, well, basically words that are not necessary. So back to the same question on benefits of sport, let's take a look at another content point. One obvious reason why people have always enjoyed playing sport is that it keeps them physically fit. Once more, I'd like you to pause the video here, identify the main idea and post it in the comment box below. So the key word in this content point is physically fit. Therefore, the main idea is that sport keeps us fit. 
And notice that I do not actually need the word physically. I can cut down physically fit into just fit. So instead of saying keeps us physically fit, I just say keep us fit. Give you a few more examples of redundant words. So for example, the phrase true facts. Well, facts are generally true, so I can just cut down to one word which is facts. Another example, past history. So I already know history is in the past, therefore I do not need to include the word past, I can just write history. So these are the steps that we have covered today. Step 1, identify the main idea of the content point. And in step 2, we only include relevant information, meaning we exclude all the stuff that's not necessary. And these are the six things that I've covered in today's lesson. Irrelevant points, repetitions, details or elaborations, examples, quotations, and redundant words. So that's it for today's video. Do keep a lookout for part two of this video where I'm going to apply the strategies that I covered in today's video to an actual summary question. So that's all for today. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Also, feel free to share this with your friends or family whom you think might find it useful as well. See you in the next one. Bye!